It feels like we've been waiting for the R1 for so long, maybe even since like the 1DX Mark II. The wait is finally over. The new flagship Canon R1 is finally here, and I'm fortunate enough to be one of the first probably first people in the world to be fair, to give you a real world hands-on and a first look preview of this camera. If this is your first time watching this channel, which let's be honest, is highly likely, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button. Now, a few housekeeping things to get out the way first. First off, thank you so much to Canon Australia and Diamonds Camera for making this preview possible. If you're from Australia and you're looking to pre-order one of these or you wanna buy one if it's out by the time you're watching this video, I'll leave a link down in the description where you can pick it up from Diamonds Camera. It's not an affiliate link, just, you know, support local and all that. Also, thank you to Kim for giving up his day to film some B-roll for this video. Really important thing, this is a preview. It is a first hands-on, it's a first look. It is not a review. This is a pre-production unit, so things can change. If anyone says that they can review a camera in one day, then they're an absolute idiot. We've only got these cameras for eight hours, so I really wanted to get them into their natural environment and see what they're capable of. I say cameras because we're also lucky enough to do a first look at the Canon R5 Mark II. I'll leave that link to the end of the video and also up top. This camera has been hyped for what feels like forever. I remember when the 1DX3 came out, a lot of people thought that was gonna be Canon's you know, big splash into the mirrorless game by releasing the R1. Alas, the 2024 Olympics are finally here. The 1D line has finally been put out to pasture to make way for a very fitting replacement. The R1, along with the 1D line of cameras, was made with a pro sport shooter in mind, and that's kind of it. Sure, there's plenty of other industries that will take advantage of this, like nature photographers and photojournalists, but the heart of this camera is speed, precision, and rugged durability. At the end of the day, if you're shooting from the sidelines at the Super Bowl, you're lying belly down in the long grass in Africa shooting some wildlife, you're on the presidential campaign, or you're photographing in a war zone, you just want something that's rugged, reliable, and just get shit done. That's what a pro is looking for. As we go over some of these specs and we preview this camera, keep that in mind. This is a camera that is not for everyone. This is made for a certain sort of pro and that pro only. At the guts of this camera is a new 24.2 back illuminated stacked CMOS sensor capable of 40 frames electronic and 12 frames mechanical. Not only that, we're gonna have access to half a second of pre-shooting to make sure you never miss a shot. I personally would have loved to have seen this in that mid to low 30 megapixel range. However, think of the guy sitting courtside at the NBA Finals. He's working for a publication, he's shooting frames, he's getting them up to Getty images within minutes. For those people shooting in those situations, less data is actually a good thing. There's a real balance between the data that's captured and the workflow that's required. But if you want a little bit more resolution, there is in-body image upscaling up to 96 megapixels. So we do talk about this a little bit more over in the Canon R5 Mark II video. So if you're interested in learning about that, probably go over there and check that out. But essentially what it's doing, I believe it's using some sort of AI to upscale our image to give us about a 96 megapixel equivalent JPEG. This is not pixel shift technology. This is after the image is taken. If you wanna know more, R5 II video. You should be able to expect the R1 to perform fairly well in low light. We've got ISO capabilities of 102,400, as well as Wi-Fi 6. We get up to 8.5 stops to stability when we combine the ibis of the body with a stabilized lens. We get dual CF Express type B slots. We also get a full size HDMI on a Canon mirrorless camera. It is about damn time. It's about damn time. Ergonomically, it feels fantastic with that integrated vertical shooting grip. Feels great, all the dials you could ever need right at your fingertips. It's a little bit heavier than the R3, but you can tell that it's made to last. It's really rugged, it's really durable. It's also got probably one of my favorite features, that new 9.4 million dot high bright blackout free EVF. It is gorgeous, it is absolutely gorgeous. For me, this is where the fun starts. You need to look through it to actually know what someone's talking about. The more resolution, the better, but not all 4Ks are made equal, not all 1080s are made equal. When you go and look through this thing, it looks like you're looking into reality. What's really cool about this is it also integrates Canon Eye Control AF. Now this is not gonna be for everyone, especially if you have an eye condition, but the focus will track where you are looking. So all you have to do inside the EVF is look with your eyes to the subject that you wanna focus on, and the focus will track that subject. It's pretty cool seeing where that sort of technology is going. I like things that enable the photographer to help get their vision out into the world. But what's more important than this, and it shouldn't really be a surprise considering this is Canon's newest flagship, this has Canon's fastest focusing system ever. They're calling it Cross-Type AF. You combine that with their deep learning subject recognition and it's a pretty sticky focusing system. We'll be putting this to the test shortly, but for the hybrid shooters in the back, Canon hasn't forgot about you either. We get 6K 60p video, 4K up to 120 frames a second, proxy video workflow, custom picture and user light support, as well as a feature I'm sure a lot of people don't care about, but for me it's absolutely fantastic, tally lamps, how good. 
for the photographers in the room, the tally lamps are the red light that comes on when you hit record. Absolutely fantastic if you're using it for a B cam for an interview, you don't need to walk over there, you just go, I know she's recording. There's obviously so much more to this camera, but that's some of the headlining specs. So let me know in the comments what you're glad they did or wish they had included in this camera. And now uh, let's go and put this camera to the test. Our first shoot of the day is at Port Adelaide Football Club. Now I thought, I'm testing out a pro sports shooter. I may as well shoot with some pro sports athletes. So that's what we've done. We've come here to put it through our spaces. Chains don't change like it used to. Who runs the roost round here? The coot's gone clear. Got the heart from the base to the snare, but the word is what's keeping them here. Word to my peers. The work don't stop till the top. Think it's resting, but we're not. I spread the message and it's love. I get the S and the P and the R from above. I see the restless with the keys and the palm for the bump. A bit of grinding up the herb is what I'm on. Shouts go out to mums. This one is the icy one. Go get the long johns. 50 prep in London if it's on the I'm on. I know they feel it when I spit. It's like the Missy song. Uh... As it is not every day, you get to shoot with a camera like this. I'm going straight to 40 frames a second with pre-shooting because if it's not pedal to the metal, you can't see it with us. So that's against the rules and you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us! When you're using a camera like this and you're shooting sports, a lot of the time it's about the reaction. How fast can your trigger finger get down and do what it needs to do? Now, in this camera, you don't have to worry as much because we have built in half a second of pre-shooting. That means that the camera is constantly cycling photos in a 20 image buffer that's just taking a new one, deleting the old one, taking a new one, deleting the old one, all the while, while you're half pressed until you take the shot. So if you just missed the big dunk, you just missed the perfect shot by under half a second, this guy's got you covered. Now it is important to remember, if we're shooting a half second at 20 frames a second in that buffer, we're creating 500 megabytes every single time that we pre-shoot. I'm also going to be shooting JPEG and RAW because I don't know if I'm going to be able to use these in Lightroom, so I want to make sure I've got something that I can show you guys. So I'm creating an absolute ton of data, but lucky for us, we've got dual CF Express Type B slots, so we've got super fast cards to manage all that fast data. So you're going to need fast cards, fast SSDs, and probably a bigger wallet to afford it all. The Cross-Type AF with deep learning subject recognition on this thing is pretty bloody sticky. The deep learning subject recognition in this camera currently can only do round ball sports, soccer, basketball, and volleyball. That's the three modes it has built in. But remember, this is pre-production. That could be fixed tomorrow, it could be fixed at launch, it could be fixed after launch. So oval ball sports like Australian football, rugby, and gridiron, American football, are not currently gonna be included in this firmware. But most sports in the world do use a round ball, so even if they don't add that for a while, most photographers buying this camera are gonna be pretty happy. You also have the ability to register a player's face. So let's say you've been given the task to document someone's 300th football game or something like that. You can register their face and anytime they come into the frame, the camera will choose, that is my priority to focus on that player and you'll get the shots and you'll get the front page of the newspaper. This is the camera technology I'm excited about, not taking away from the photographer, but enabling them to be the best version of themselves and aiding us to get our creative vision into the real world. That is a wrap at the football. I'd plan to go do some shooting at the skate park, but the rain has got the best of us. So we will adapt and we will push on. Now the weather did come in and unfortunately it took the chance to shoot skaters ripping up the bowl with it. I was super bummed out because I was really looking forward to doing that. So we had to adapt, we had to push on because we've got to bring you guys the, you know, the valuable content. So what we've done instead, we took the dogs to the park, we shot some birds and we tested out that animal IAF. Before we get stuck into the animal IAF, I want to note a few things. This EVF should be illegal. I own a Sony a7S III, which has a very similar spec to EVF, but this thing is gorgeous. I'm so in love, I'm so in love, yeah. Now, you just need to look through it. I mean, you kind of expect that in the price this camera is going to be, but it's just double chef's kiss. I'm in love, do you hear me? And second, after testing the in-body image upscaling, it is definitely not pixel shift technology. I go into this in more depth in the R5 Mark II video, so if you're interested in that, make sure you go and watch it. But for now, let's get back to the park. My two golden retrievers, Taco and Buddy, they are by no means greyhounds, but they are still bloody fast. And this new cross type AF with that subject recognition was, it was the opposite of Teflon. It was so sticky, which is a good thing. Oh, it's all sticky. Using a camera like this is dangerous. You get that inclination to just unload at 40 frames a second with pre-shooting and just fire at everything, you make so much data and you come away with such an overwhelming amount of images. I found the same thing when I was shooting with the Sony A9 III, pairing high frame rates with pre-shooting and a trigger finger to match, you come away with such massive amounts of data. Like it is fantastic that this is where camera technology is going. It's uh, enabling us to get the most out of our cameras and getting 
what we want to capture you know into the real world but just like when you drive a mclaren or a lambo you need to be really careful there's a lot of power at those wheels if you go too hard you're going to come off and crash when you're using a camera like this you need to be responsible you need to use that trigger finger really sparingly so you leave a game with 2500 photos not 25,000 photos. I know personally, I would get so overwhelmed looking through 25,000 photos that all look pretty similar. I would find a way to distract myself. I'd push it to the side and I'd never come back to it. Let me know in the comments down below if you were to shoot with a Canon R1, A, what you'd be shooting and what would your workflow be managing so many potential files? Ergonomically, it's very similar to the Canon R3, just with some minor tweaks and it's a little bit heavier. I do wonder though if the Canon R3 was a one and done or if that line is here to stay into the future. Perhaps there is a future for the R3 because in Australia right now, while I don't have a recommended retail price, I expect this to be launched at around 12 to 13,000 Australian dollars. Now a pro who knows what they need and they've been shooting 1Ds forever, they're just not going to look at the price, they're going to rock up, I'll have one, see you later, thank you very much. They're happy, they'll probably even get two because they need a backup body. But for the pro who's not shooting as much as those sort of guys, and maybe they divide their time of half sport, half something else, you could look at this and you could go, hmm, I can get an R3 for about $6,500. Let's say the R1's about $12,000. I could pay a little bit more than that, and I could have two R3s compared to one R1. I'm just saying there's gonna be a lot of people, I think, that will ask themselves that question and go, I could get two R3s instead of just one R1. No doubt the R1 is the better camera, but hey, when you're spending your money, you wanna make sure you're making the right choice. While we had the dogs in the park, we tried our luck at shooting some of the birds that were ripping around and eating the leaves on the trees. Now the lighting wasn't necessarily helping us and the birds were at times blending into the trees due to their colors or hiding in the shadows. So there was times where the focus did get quite lost, but when the focus did find its subject, it held it pretty well and was quite sticky. But remember, this is a pre-production camera. There is no doubt a bunch of professionals shooting at the Olympics, at the F1, major sporting events and out in nature shooting wildlife and they're reporting back to developers who may even be watching this video and they're tweaking those algorithms so when this camera is at that v1 firmware is at production when it's available later in the year or into early next year i have no doubt that this focus will be like a lamp ray because once it latches on it don't let go remember this is not a review but if i had to give a little antidote i would say canon is definitely going to be issuing an apology an apology because no doubt they will have orders that exceed their expectations and that will make this camera very hard to get. I have no doubt this camera is going to be extremely popular. This is one of those pieces of kit that if you're a pro, you don't ask questions about the price. You just pay for it, you take it and you add it into your workflow. This is your money maker. This is what pays for the house that you live in. This is what pays for the food on your plate. This is your hot ticket. I think this is gonna be incredibly popular for the people who need a camera like this. And what I am so excited for is the dinosaurs that have been resistant to mirrorless, that have been shooting DSLRs forever and a day, finally having no choice but to admit that mirrorless is not the future, it is the here and it is the now. Right. Anyway guys, my name is Jed Dobre. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you joining me on this preview and music suggestion of the week. Go listen to anything Alex Milton has ever done. He is fantastic. And um, I think I'll see you in the Canon R5 Mark II preview because you've subscribed, you'll get the notification, and if not, it's gonna be right here at the end of the video. Bye. Change don't change like it used to. Who runs the roost round here? The coot's gone clear. Got the heart from the base to the snare, but the word is what's keeping them here. Word to my peers. The work don't stop till the top. Think it's resting, but we're not. I spread the message and it's love. I get the S and the P and the R from above. I see the restless with the keys and the palm for the bar.